everybody. Praise the Lord and welcome to Nightline. I am your host for this evening. I am Annie T. Broughton and I am so thankful uh, to the good Lord just to be in your homes on this evening. We are going to have such an amazing time. We're going to be sharing some valuable information and we have the beautiful Ruth Tidhar with us on the set with well she's zooming in with us tonight she's a so social worker with Everett and so I can't wait to talk with her and for her to share what what all she's doing and how God is blessing her and how God is using her uh, in these days and times I do have a scripture I would love to share tonight it's lifted from Psalms 139 13 through verse number 16 from the tree of life version and it reads, for you have created my conscience. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am awesomely, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows that very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret, in the secret, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw me when I was unformed, and in your book were written the days that were formed, when not one of them had come to be. To God be all the glorious of a powerful word from the Lord tonight. And again, I have such an amazing guest on the set with me. And I do want to uh, tell you that we have some amazing prayer partners. Uh, if any time during this conversation with Ruth that you would love to call us tonight, we are here and we want to hear from you. So Ruth, how are you doing tonight? God bless you, sweetheart. Thank you. God bless you too. And all of you listeners, really, it's, um, it's such a difficult time in our country. It's the 305 days of this terrible war has been going on. Yes. That's the one thing, but even during war and during peace, Efrat has been doing the same work for, wow, since 1977. Yes, yes. We've been helping women uh, who were deliberating whether they're able to continue their pregnancy or not, and we've been helping them decide that they're able and they can and to give, to give the gift of life to their child. Yes. And uh, we've been privileged, I've been privileged to be in the fraud organization for a while, for close to 24 years, since 2001, since the early 2001, February 4th, exactly. Um, I've been the social worker and the head of the assistance department in the fraud organization. Mm -hmm. uh, fraud helps pregnant women in Israel and who were deliberating whether or not to continue their pregnancy yes. and were there to give them emotional support, financial support, and concrete help. And uh, we've been privileged and blessed to help over 88,000 women already up until now. And that's a city if you take <laughs> into consideration the parents and siblings. It's, it's a city, it's a city. Mm -hmm. it, really actually a city in Israel and um, and we've helped the, all these women over the years to have their babies and we have amazing stories all the time it's just that that's what I do all day talk to women <laughs> and and listen first off listen to them listen to them because mm -hmm. everybody has a story yes. and everybody is coming from difficult difficult situations and you know nobody is happy to have an abortion. It's always right. a terrible, terrible decision to have to, even to have to consider. It's it's terrible. Right. And and, um, and we've been, and we're there for those women. We have volunteers mm -hmm. in the in field. All the work in the field is actually done by volunteers. Wow. There's no way. I could give the right attention to 3,000 women every year <laughs> by myself. I have a wonderful staff, a small paid staff, 
but a big, huge, almost a hundred um, volunteers in the in the in the field, who you know it used to be really important, and the city that every you know I was an, a volunteer in every city and town, and it's still nice, but it's the main thing is the story. Mm -hmm. We have volunteers from all different walks of life, women who have had abortions and are sorry about it. Mm -hmm. Women who got to us in time, had their baby, and are so pleased with the results that they want to pay it forward to help mm -hmm. other women. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a huge privilege. I don't know how to say it other words. The women who turn to us are at a stormy, terrible intersection in their life where they have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. They have to they either continue the pregnancy or not. There's no third decision. There's no third possibility. There's just the two. Yeah. And, and we come there into that sensitive, delicate, terrible situation that they're in. Yes. With a, a willing ear, a, a volunteer who can listen to her, befriend her, speak with her at all hours of day and night, make her know that she's not alone. That's like the really main, the main message of the volunteers is that we're with you and you're not alone. We have meaningful assistance to give these women also. Yeah. If it's food packages during the pregnancy, if it's after the birth, all the baby equipment, brand new, <laughs> in, with the messenger service sent to her door, it's 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 really a meaningful meaningful um, mission that we have, I would say. Yeah, it's and I, I look at it as it is a mission. It's a mission uh, from God. It's an assignment that he has placed on your life and i believe in my heart that you are one of the ones uh, you are right for the job for this mission i read that you uh, moved to israel when you were just only 16 years old <laughs> i did i moved my yeah. parents with, with my parents my father should rest in peace and my mother should live a long, happy life, which yeah. she has, she is. And my sisters who are here nearby me, yeah, I'm very lucky, very, very lucky yeah. to have basically grown up here. I, I finished high school here. I went to college here. Wow. So, yeah, but even as a teenager, I know that had to be a lot. You know, I, I know you felt right at home there, but can you share any of your experiences, sure. even as a teenager. With pleasure. <laughs> with pleasure, with pleasure, I'll tell you. It, I think that I'm a different kind of story than other teens that may, that came at the same time that we are at the same age that I did, because we, right before, just a few months before we decided that my parents took us here, brought us to this country, brought us to Israel, uh, it's called, uh, I had decided that I wanted to be more religious, okay. Jew, my Jewish religion, mm -hmm. which I knew about, but I wasn't really practicing as a, as a kid, as a teenager. And uh, I, really just a few months around my 16th birthday, I'd say I'm born at the end of April. Around then I decided that I wanted to be, uh, keep the Sabbath and yeah. keep the, like, the, the way the Jews do. And um, and then three months three months later we were in Israel already <laughs> three and a half three and a half months later and I it's it's um, I was just so happy to be here wow I, I was just so happy to be here mm -hmm. I didn't know any Hebrew I knew the the alphabet but not the language oh, so okay. I, <laughs> I I I went into school. I don't know, I didn't understand anything that was flying, but I was right there and I wasn't shy and I spoke up. I spoke half in English and half in Hebrew and somehow it, it was okay. It was okay. I, I, finished, I finished high school and went to college here. And, uh, 
my my six children were born here and uh, yeah yeah so i think i'm a different story there were other teens who came together at the same time that we did that had a harder time of it but i it, it was all i wanted to do mm -hmm. be in israel that was really it's like give a 16 year old exactly what she wants <laughs> wow <laughs> well do you believe and i think that you do believe this, but do you believe that uh, your steps was ordered there by the Lord to do what you're doing now? I I feel privileged. Okay. Let's put it that way. Okay. I feel very privileged. Yeah. I feel like, um, like it's it's. I mean, it is a kind of a funny story how I got to the job. Okay. <laughs> I can tell it if you want. Yeah, if, if, if you like, I, I want to hear what you got to say. I, was, I had been working <laughs> for 12 years as a social worker in a little, in a small town not far from uh, Tel Aviv, and I was living in a in a in a, another small village that was right right in between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. And at some point, I was I was in second marriage. We were married for almost a year, and I. We really wanted to move to Jerusalem. We both had family here, and it was what we were planning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I called, I called a friend and asked her um, if there's any job. A friend who studied social work with me, who was working in the Jerusalem Municipality Welfare uh, Agency, if there's any job for me, because I can start my uh, commuting to Jerusalem instead of to the small town next to Tel Aviv. And she said, "Wait, wait, wait! There's, yeah, there's something written on the on the blackboard here, on the board here. Yeah, they're looking for a social worker who's wow. going to be the the um, assi the assistant to the deputy mayor of Jerusalem." I said, "That's <laughs> for me. That's my job. That's it. No, everybody else can just step down. It's me." And I sent him my my CV and I wrote him a, a cover letter. How there's no way that anybody <laughs> could possibly do this job better than me. And I called his secretary every week, and she already knew my my voice on the phone. <laughs> and I didn't get the job. I, now I say thank God I didn't get the job. Oh. I didn't get the job. I was very disappointed at the time. Mm -hmm. However, okay, it wasn't for me. And actually, it was very nice. The secretary said to me, Ruthie, don't worry. Mm -hmm. A livelihood comes from God. It's an expression wow. that we have, that we have yeah, in beautiful. Hebrew. Is that your livelihood, your, you know, your, um, your livelihood comes from God. Don't worry. What it, what's supposed to be, you'll get. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. That was what she said to, to like console me that I didn't get the job that I so was gung-ho to get. And... A few weeks later, we moved to Jerusalem. Actually, we moved under, you know, this is a war-torn country. Mm. And what happened was that the, this, the, the little village that we were living in um, turned into just a very dangerous place almost overnight. Uh, oh. the first, the Antifada of 2000, of the year 2000. And uh, we moved to Jerusalem practically like, uh, you know, on a dime, <laughs> we moved, we had no, we had just had nothing to do. We just, my, my husband was a witness to a shooting incident mm -hmm. and he just wasn't. And, and I said, you know what? Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go, we'll move to Jerusalem right away. And we did. Thank God we had a place to come to. And, um, a few weeks after, a couple weeks after we moved, I was starting to look for a job in Jerusalem because it was the commute was hard to Tel Aviv. Yeah. It was a long ride. I mean, it's not in American sense. It's not such a big commute. An hour and a quarter drive is not such a big deal in America, but in here it, it felt like a long, long drive. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, so I get a, I get a phone call from my contact within the in the municipality saying, "Listen, there's an organization." that needs a social worker. Maybe you go in and have an interview. What happened was that um, Dr. Shusheim, may he rest in peace, who founded the Efrat organization, um, he, the, uh, the organization was starting to grow, starting to grow seriously, like exponentially. 
And he realized that he really needed immediately a social worker to run the assistance department to make sure that the volunteers speak the way they're supposed to or respectful the way they're supposed to. You know, we come in a very compassionate way, uh, but I'll talk about that a little bit more later. <laughs> so he realized that he needed a social worker to run the place. So who did he turn to? The deputy mayor of Jerusalem. He was in contact with him and he was the head of the welfare department of the municipality. He said, do you have a social worker for me? And I was fresh in his mind because my CV was there on his desk. And I was, I was such a, I was so persistent about calling and I wanted that job. He said, here, Ruth T. Hart, try her, she'll be fine. Wow. <laughs> so I went in for an interview and I started to work in it. Right? And it was, uh, it was, that was really, really, I mean, it's just such a funny, like, you know, roundabout kind of story that it, just shows that livelihood is from livelihood and mission and, and assignments, as you called it, are, are from God for sure. Amen. So, right. So I've been, and I've been there ever since 2000, February 4th, 2001, I've been, in, I've been working in a crack. Well, I think, I think that you are the right one for the <laughs> right job at the right time. Exactly. Wow, praise the Lord. Well, tonight we are talking to the beautiful Ruth Tithard, and she is a social worker with Efrat. Uh, but right now we're getting ready to go to our beautiful musical guest, Miss Lisa Pruitt. We're so happy to have her, and she's going to be singing Sometimes It Takes a Mountain. Amen. <laughs> Faced a mountain that I never faced before. That's why I'm calling on the Lord. I know it's been a while, but Lord, please hear my prayer. I need you like I never had before. Sometimes it takes a mountain Sometimes a troubled sea Sometimes it takes a desert To get a hold Jesus, I thought I could control whatever life would throw my way. But this, I will admit, has brought me to my knees. I need you, Lord, and I'm not ashamed to say. Sometimes the troubled sea. Sometimes it takes a desert to get a hold of me. Your love is so much stronger. 
To trust you and believe Sometimes it takes a mountain To trust you and believe Sometimes it takes has a way of just setting the tone and the atmosphere for the evening and she is a gifted powerful young woman of God and she just saying sometimes it takes a mountain to trust and to believe to God be all the glory. So Ruth I want to come back to you because I know that God is doing so many wonderful things in your life and he's using you in such a mighty mighty way um, is a frat. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. Fine, uh, is, frat, yeah. Yeah, is that Israel's main pro-life organization? We are, the, the politics are different in Israel. Okay. They're, it's not, it's, um, it's not as um, strictly divided as as it is in the states it's a different kind of story yes are we are of course for life mm -hmm. and we are of course um for helping women but yes. that we and we're for helping women give life to their babies that's what we do that's what we do every day all day long thank god <laughs> and um but it's we don't do demonstrations and we don't it's it's just different it's just different it's mm -hmm. um it's less political it's okay. less political in israel i think than in, than in the states of course i i might sound american but i'm not really so <laughs> you know <laughs> um yes we are the biggest organization that does anything about uh, helping women avoid abortion Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we've been doing so since 1977, which is really a long time. And as I said before, over 88,000 babies have come to this world through our intervention and through our help. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's huge. It's really huge. And we get thanks all the time mm -hmm. because, and often we get thank we, we, Today I had such a moving letter. It was I, I, it was a long letter. I can't really go into the whole thing, but it was so moving because this wow. is a woman who had an abortion, 
Mm. And she had, was going through a stormy time with her husband and she didn't know if she was going to stay married and she had had an abortion and she got pregnant again by accident because they got back together. They were separated, they got back together. Mm -hmm. And she really thought that there was just, she, it, first off, the first time with all the pressure, she went and had the abortion. Mm -hmm. And she was so sorry about it afterwards. She was so pained by it and yes. anguished by it afterwards. I don't know, like, I never, I myself never had an abortion, but I, I know from women, from speaking with women every single day, what a painful, grief-ridden sort of situ situation that mm -hmm. is. And uh, this woman afterwards turned to us when she was sure that I mean, she was just under so much pressure and yes. she needed so much support. And today she just doesn't know how to thank us enough. The baby's three months old. Wow. It's such a beautiful little girl. And the couple are really working on their relationship to get back together and build a good, solid family together. So it was just such a pleasure to read that letter. And that's just one of hundreds and thousands of letters that we get, thousands and thousands of letters that we get from women thanking us for our intervention in time. And um, the, the, what's really key to that is their volunteers. Our volunteers are very special women yeah. who are trained to listen to these mm -hmm. women who are deliberating about their pregnancy, mm -hmm. to them compassionately and with, and with, oh, with openness and with caring and with loving and helping her helping her really to listen to the different voices in her head about the pregnancy because mm -hmm. she's not quiet about having a, an abortion if she was quiet about it mm -hmm. if she really was sure it was the right thing she would have gone and done it she wouldn't have come to us she wouldn't have gotten to us the fact that she came to us is because she in her heart felt that right. it was not the right thing for her to do it was not going to do her good, whether she had experience or didn't have experience, but she, she, she already felt that that was something that she's going to be really, really, really sorry about afterwards. Right. And, um, and so she came to us, she comes to us with uh, asking for support, and then yes. we're really there to give it to her with, with the help, of course, of, with, of our amazing donors, every bit of assistance that we give mm -hmm. is through private donations. Um, we give a, a very meaningful um, assistance package. It could have food packages during the pregnancy if, if the family needs, and after the baby is born, a crib and a stroller and yeah. a baby and a baby. <laughs> bottles and pacifiers and blankets <laughs> and sheets and clothing and just everything that she needs. Yeah. And two years of monthly packages of diapers and That's wipes, a blessing. formula if needed, food for the family if needed. It's a really meaningful, I know how important it is to these women. It's really a big deal. It's, it's an important, important um, support for them. And then that's not all, because we also have a department that's called Rise Up. Rise Up, okay. We have a wonderful, we have a wonderful social worker who um, is a, she's an occupational social worker. She gives occupational counseling, helping these women decide where they want to work, what they want to work, and where they see themselves developing and growing, as it's called <laughs> Rise Up, because we want to help them get back Wow. on their feet and bring a livelihood to their family. As we said before, livelihood is from God, as the, as the secretary told me so many years ago. Yeah. Livelihood from God, <laughs> and we all have, we're all, we all need to do our bit to, 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 help, uh, to help ourselves along. Yes. And so we give serious assistance with, the, with occupational counseling mm -hmm. and with help to pay for daycare. Wow, which is a huge expense, a huge expense. Mm -hmm. there is there are government subsidies but they're hard to get and you have to 
go through the bureaucracy. It takes a few months. Yeah. And in the meantime, these women have to pay the full price. And many of them, it's prohibitive. It's very expensive. And they, it's it's prohibitive on their on their welfare income to pay for daycare as well. Mm-hmm. So help them find. We help them to look for a job. How do you how to look for a job? What do you want to work in? Where do you see yourself developing over the next time? We've helped many women pay tuition. We have oh, lawyers, okay. <laughs> and we have teachers. Wow. They, they, the pregnancy found them somehow in the middle of their studies. Mm-hmm. And what are they going to do? And it's a shame not to finish. They already worked so hard to get that degree. And we help them pay sometimes pay the last payment of the tuition so that they can finish their degree, help them with daycare so that they, they can finish their degree. It's, uh, we really have, we try to and envelope these women and give as much help specific to their needs as best as we can. With the help, of course, of our donors. Without them, we couldn't do yes. anything. <laughs> and you have a lot of soldiers that's, they are on the front line but they're reaching back, right? They're calling you and because they know their wives need assistance. Right, right. So I, I, it's very interesting. We're 305 days into this war already. Mm-hmm. It's really terrible. Mm-hmm. I, you, you know, you say the front, when you're in the United States and you say the front, I know that in your mind, you're thinking like I, Iraq or or Uzbekistan or someplace far away. Okay. But no, if I get into my car mm-hmm. next year where I live in Jerusalem, I get into my car that's parked outside my front door. Mm-hmm. I'll drive for an hour and a quarter and I'm at the Gaza border. Oh, okay. We're not talking about far away. We're talking about right here, right, right oh. here. Yeah. And, and so when, when, there when Hamas sent the rockets it came near my house also and it, it's you know it's like we're, we're not far away as you can as you imagine in your head okay. what, the front, what the front and where as as as, uh, as uh, opposed to civilians mm-hmm. it's it's all the same it's really all the same and um the, all of our men do reserve duty it's just oh, okay. that we have so many who every every young man and woman does army service first mm-hmm. off when they finish high school three years for men and two years for women it's, it's a long stretch mm-hmm. it's like they when they're starting to get out go study a profession or something they're already in their 20s which is different than than what you know and it's 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 really been very 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 difficult. But and I must say that in general, mm-hmm. the story is that the women turn to us when they found themselves pregnant, mm-hmm. and their boyfriend or their married husband is pressuring them to have an abortion. Oh, They're okay. under pressure from the man to abort. They in their in their heart feel that it's not the right thing to do for them. But in the beginning of the war, we saw kind of a turnabout. It was a very interesting thing. We started getting phone calls from young men who were at the front, who were fighting Mm -hmm. to keep our country safe, to keep us safe, to keep their families safe. And we got calls from these men saying, my Mm -hmm. wife is terrified. I'm on the front. We don't know what's going to happen with me. We don't know what's going to happen in our country. We're in such a difficult and scary time. Mm -hmm. And she wants to have an abortion because she got pregnant by by mistake, by accident. Didn't mean to. Mm -hmm. Got pregnant. She wants to have an abortion. Please call her and tell her, help her not to. Mm -hmm. Help her, help her. Give her support. Give her the support that she needs so that she can find it in her heart to continue this and have that baby. I want my baby. I want my wife. I want my baby. I want my family Mm -hmm. to be safe. And it's like such a turnaround because usually, look, also the men who pressure, it's not because they want to pressure their wives to have an abortion. 
as I said, nobody wants to have an abortion. <laughs> However, the finances are difficult. I don't know. You, uh, did you ever visit Israel? Uh, I don't know. We, you know who of your listeners ever did. But I, the, we, pardon? Yeah. You, are you asking me? Have I ever been? Yeah. yeah. No, but I would love to. <laughs> well, I hope you will very soon. It's a beautiful, beautiful country. And yes. it's always been difficult. We live to the very tippy end of our income. Yeah. And we, there's, if there's a difficulty, if my, if my, like if I'm a man and my wife got pregnant and I didn't mean to, we were planning for this. And I, she's not going to be able to work for a while because of the pregnancy or I just lost my job or, or whatever, whatever story it is. The finances are really difficult are really mm -hmm. difficult. So it's not as if they want to, but it's it, it, the story is that they don't see possibility of having another child. It's hard for us already. We have one child or two children. How can we possibly have a third? And that's like, that's the story that we hear all the time. And then all of a sudden we're hearing a, whole, a totally different story, 180 degrees different. The opposite is that the men are calling and asking to please help their wives to continue their pregnancy. Wow. They want their babies. Praise God. Wow. So as you can see, um, Ruth is sharing with us some information that we need to be made aware of. And I'm thankful for this organization that she's a part of. But right now we're getting ready to go back to Lisa Fruitt. <laughs> and she's going to be singing, I Am Alone. Amen. <laughs> He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of the righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When I walk through deep waters, I know that you will be with me. When I'm standing in the fire, I will not be overcome. Through the valley of the shadow, I will not be. dark of night will not overtake me. I am pressing into you. Lord, you fight my every battle.
You're my strength, you're my defender. You're my refuge in the storm. Through these trials, you've always been faithful. You bring healing to my soul. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. Oh, I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my goodness, the name of that song that Lisa just sang is I Am Not Alone. And so we again, we are so grateful to have her with us tonight on Nightline. To God be all the glory. We're hoping that you're calling in tonight. We're hoping that uh, if you need anything from, uh, from the prayer partners, please feel free to call us. We want to hear from you. We want to pray with you. And we want to encourage you in your walk with the Lord. So again, uh, we're having a wonderful time tonight with the beautiful Ruth Tithar and she's a social worker with a frat. And so, um, Ruth, how can we get more information about you or contact you or if any of our viewers would love to support you? Well, thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I really do want to invite anyone, all of your listeners, to partner with us in saving babies in Israel. That's what we do yes. all day long, every day, some 3,000 babies every year. It's really an amazing kind, an amazing organization. I, yeah. I mean, I'm there for, I've been privileged to be there for 23 years. And I have to say, it's, it's kind of amazing that because all the work is done in the field, and the field is done by volunteers, yes. All of the equipment that we buy for the babies and for the families is, is bought in bulk. Our overhead is very, very low. And for $1,500, which really doesn't sound like that much money, mm -hmm. you can help save a baby in Israel. Wow. Amen. What's really amazing about it, and that's one of the reasons that the organization had started to grow so quickly, when uh, so many years ago, when they, when the, when the head of the organization decided that he needed a social worker, um, was because he came upon this brilliant idea: mm -hmm. is that the generous donor who gives fifteen hundred dollars to help save a baby mm -hmm. receives a certificate of honor with the date of birth and the first name of the baby. Wow, that's it. beautiful. So it's really, really something. Now you don't have to, you know, any donation is helpful, of course, but if, uh, and and goes to saving babies. Mm -hmm. Every penny of it goes to saving babies. And But um, a person who gives the donation, we send them a certificate with, with the name and the date of birth of the baby. Yeah. It's really very, very moving. I know from volunteers, how very moving it was. They, it was for them to receive that. Um, 
if I could just tell a story, a yes. little story. Please do. From, I, you know your scriptures, right? You yes. remember the remember in the Old Testament, the, the daughters, in, I think it's in Numbers, I think. Not, I, I, I'm not so good with the names in English, but it's in, um, it, it's in, the, in the desert. There were the, da the daughters of Slofhad. Who, yes, the Lofahed. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Lofahed, right, yeah. exactly. Who yes. wanted to have their place mm -hmm. in, in the land of Israel. And they were daughters, and the law was that the, that the, that the sons were the ones who got the inheritance. Yes. <laughs> they went to, to Moses and said, hey, this isn't fair. Mm -hmm. We're five girls. Mm -hmm. And our, and our father died, and what, we're not going to get our place in, 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 in the land? We want our place in the land. I was sitting one afternoon at work, get a phone call from a donor, and she wanted to know, she said that the date of birth was coming up. She had made a donation for $1,500, mm -hmm. and the date of birth was coming up, and she wanted to know if the baby had been born, and... And if if I have any information, so I looked at I looked it up, and I said to her, "Wow, you know what? Your, here's your baby. She was born a week ago, a girl, and her name is Noah. Hmm. Noah, N O A. And do you know who? I asked this woman, "Do you know who Noah was?" Mm -hmm. I started telling her that she was one of five daughters of Slofhad and uh, Slofahad and who who want who um, demanded their 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 inheritance in in the land of Israel and she said wow you don't know i'm here in israel <laughs> because i came specifically because i needed to buy just a little apartment just some place where i can put my head yeah israel i came i made all the trip the trip and the trouble and all my savings went to buy myself a place, an inheritance for myself <laughs> in the land of Israel. And now I got a baby whose name is Noah, wow. who was one of the daughters who demanded their inheritance. So, you know, it's, um, it's just such an important organization. And yeah. we really heartily invite you to partner with us in Saving Babies in Israel. I'm sure you'll give the information how to how to contact us. We're on the web, of course. Yeah, we have Many it up on the screen things. right now. Great, yeah, wonderful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Wonderful. So, uh, and thank you very much for the opportunity to let you know about what we do <laughs> in the Frat, in the Frat organization and the important work that we do. Well, you know what, I am truly grateful <laughs> And so very thankful to meet you <laughs> and nice for you to share with us what all you are doing, what you all are doing. And one thing I read too is that you all uh, says that the self-worth of these women have skyrocketed. <laughs> the the, the, the self-worth the self -worth absolutely. of these ladies absolutely. have skyrocketed. Absolutely. How how important to you is for for that to happen for the self worth of this that's the whole yeah. point that's the whole point mm -hmm. because if we help a woman realize that she is able to go ahead yes have a baby and be a mother 100% mm -hmm. of our babies are raised by their birth mothers mm -hmm. we give her the the that the strength to go ahead and have that child. Yeah. And it, 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 it's enormous for them. It's enormous. Mm -hmm. It really is. And then help her get back to work, help her get back on, on her feet. Yes. To, be a, a, to feel like she's, she's a contributing, she's keeping her family, mm -hmm. she's taking care of her family. It's such an important thing. Lisa Pruitt just saying, you are not alone. And to me, you know, this was a beautiful song for her to sing at this time because to, that's what you are doing, that's what your organization is doing, is letting these women know 
that they that are they not alone. alone. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So true. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And so by you providing the necessary help that they need, the strollers, the cribs, the bottles, helping with daycare, that's vital in itself. Vital, vital. <laughs> so I, I just want to thank God for everything that you are doing, your organization is doing. And, yeah. you know, you are the hands and feet of Christ. You're showing the love of God uh, around the world and we are truly blessed. We are truly honored. We are truly grateful to have you with us on Nightline tonight, just to share. I know you're gonna get to share everything that you're doing. So that means you have to come back and share some more. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we put the information on the screen, but we want to share it again. So we're going to put it back up there so everyone uh, that's viewing in tonight will know how they can be a blessing, how they can be he helpful uh, in helping with you and effort. To God be all the glory. So uh, we're much. going. <laughs> so again, thank you for that. And so we're going to go back to uh, Lisa Pruitt, and she's going to be singing Seek to the Mountains. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Why would I worry when giants come calling my name? My God is so much bigger than troubles I face. Why would I hunger for power or riches or fame? My God is so much better than all of these things. So I won't be shaken. I won't be moved. My God is faithful. His promise is true. So I speak. My God is bigger, better, stronger, greater than you. My enemies scatter, cause they know the battle is done. Whoa, my God is stronger, the victory's already won. Died for my ransom, rose up on the third day. Oh, my God is greater than death, hell and the grave. Oh, I won't be shaken. I won't be moved. is true so I speak to the mountains oh it's time to move cause my God is bigger better stronger greater than you there's no mountain too high no valley too low, there's no fear that I have, he doesn't already know. There's no problem too big, 
There's no weapon too strong. There is nothing for God that's impossible. There's no mountain too high, no valley too low. There's no fear that I have. He doesn't already know. There's no problem too big. There's no weapon too strong. There is nothing for God that's impossible. Cause my God is bigger, better, stronger, greater, bigger, better, stronger. 